Imagine if, if you will, you are spending nearly $50,000 a year to give your children a top-of-the-line education at Greens Farms Academy in Westport, Connecticut. This elite school states its goal as, quote, provide students with a sense of connection, a foundation of trust and respect. However, in our ongoing Project Veritas investigation into education, rather than uncovering issues of secret curriculums like the one we exposed in Cos Cobb, Connecticut, now we are stunned to learn of a teacher's twisted sexual statements at this private school in Connecticut, apparently about his own students. You know even tempted? Yes. Yeah. It's very, I mean, literally and figuratively. They can solve that. I'm sure they can, but that possibly means me losing my job, my reputation. It's risky. It's way too risky. That's Iman Rasti. Born and raised in Iran, he is a middle school English teacher at Greens Farms Academy, as well as the seventh grade dean and the director of the private school's writing center. He met up with our journalist, and instead of discussing curriculum at the school, he chose to describe his adolescent female students in a graphic, sexual manner for nearly two hours. One thing they do these days, they sit down in front of me. I say, purposefully sit somewhere in a class that is completely directed to sponsor me and they <coughs> spread their legs wide open. And that's just brutal. Brutal. They're predated different angles of green, black, white. And they make sure, and it's like they talk to each other, so the three of them do that. The three of them? Two, three, depending on the group, because they are not shy about sharing their, I'm guessing. Sharing their what? Their, their, how they feel or how what they're up to, because girls do it also solo or together. They're not, listen, I open their legs wide open. And I'm teaching, and I see what I see. They make sure that panties, panties are like positioned in a way that I actually see the thing. But you saw the underwear. What else can you see? Yeah. I can see the side. So I control my teaching, so I do the best I can. Because if I do three people are talking there, two people there, you know, it's not going to work. They have to give me all their attention. So I'm talking and I look down and I see that. You see what? And I see someone sitting like this. Like what? Like this. I can't see this thing. They're sitting like this. Short, short, scared. And Green panties, or I kind of insert it in. Do you see that? See what? You see that? that? You see that picture of um, the image? But it was not the image. The actual. You say what did I say? It's your picture that you found. Oh, ah, that's why. Well, how can you concentrate? How can you continue talking what you're talking when you see that? I don't know, for women you see, I don't know, I guess for women it's sexy to it. You see a man with a heart on and that, you know, maybe it's sexy, I don't know. But you find that person sexy, probably. I don't know if it's sexy for a man to see a woman or a woman to see a man. I don't know that, but what I know is that it's hard to continue talking as if nothing has happened in your mind, in your brain. And they smile. And they smirk at you. And they close and open, yeah. close and open, open. Yes. Yeah. They're not. Like when girls start having sex, it's, it's, it's interesting for someone like me who has been in and out of relationships and all my life and married and all that. You see changes in face and appearance, you probably too. So you see a 15 year old girl and then. Next year they come back to school and they say, 
She's a woman. She's a woman. There's no way. She has gained weight just doing nothing. It's clear that she has had sex. A lot of sex. Part of the reason why those girls give me attention, in addition to me being genuine with them and honest with them, I think is maybe they get that bond, the sexual tension. I think I, I feel like they're kidding. They don't say anything. We get that. Now, after our journalists met up with Rosti, we weren't sure if his statements were true or just a fantasy conjured up in his mind. But in a second meeting, he doubled down on his statements. Okay, and then what happened that's real? What happened what? What happened that was real? Everything else I told you. I, so, sitting in the bike in front of me in a chair and spreading legs so I can see. Yeah. I'm sure that when they bend over. Making sure that when you get. Okay, but. When they ride. Yeah, when they ride, they yeah. can see their. A nice, big, beautiful fur. Yeah, I'm not make sure I see them. Yeah. So everything that you told me about them was fantasy? Except for the that I see, the side of the pictures, the ass that I see, the bending down, and no, I have not. Despite Rasti's claims that he hasn't done anything with his young students, he said he is willing to make exceptions on his, quote, principle to not F his students. I uh, get the vibe. Uh -huh. It's obvious that I refuse because I don't have my students. That you don't F them? That's my principle. That's your what? Principle. I, okay. I don't do that. But sometimes I make exceptions. Okay. Sometimes. It's important to note that Rasti, who was a college professor when he was younger, admitted to our journalist about having numerous sexual affairs with his students at the time. Not with my K-12, but college. Mm -hmm. I had sex with many, 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 many of my students. In light of his alarming sexual statements regarding current adolescent students, we reached out to Tom McAndrew, retired 25-year veteran of the Pennsylvania State Police. McAndrew led major criminal investigations and performed personality profiles of offenders. We had McAndrew review our interview for his assessment of Rasti's comments. The concern with this particular individual is that he sort of has blurred the lines uh, between fantasy and reality. He certainly is in a position of power and authority, and he should recognize that role. When I was in the Pennsylvania State Police, uh, the unit I was in, we would often look at threat assessments and uh, elevation of somebody's behavior. And certainly this individual would strike me as somebody, if he has not already acted out, meaning, you know, victimized uh, children, he certainly has thought about it. When they start to justify that behavior in their mind, which he seems to do throughout that conversation, it becomes very concerning. If it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. I wouldn't want this individual around my teenage uh, child when he, this is where his thought process is. And he seems to almost have an obsession with it. As you know, frequently as he talked about it, it shows that it's constantly on his mind. The Sandusky scandal uh, at Penn State, the years of concern, people were raising the, the red flag and it got ignored. All these scandals, if they haven't proved something about human nature, we should be more in tune to what's going on. We are placing the employee on leave and will be promptly investigating this matter and taking appropriate action. To be clear, Iman Rasti has not admitted to acting on any of his sexual feelings towards underage girls in his classroom or anywhere else. However, his relentless discussion about them in a sexual manner is worth reporting. If you or a student you know has been the subject of predatory behavior at our trusted educational institutions, send us a tip at veritastips at protonmail.com or give us a call at our signal line. Be brave, do something.